When we seek the kingdom of God, when we prioritize Jesus, God promises us that we will have life in abundance. We will have peace that surpasses all understanding. We will have joy, hope, and love. Have you ever been in a situation where you thought you had more time than what you actually did? Or maybe you hadn't had been as prepared as what you thought you may have been. Maybe coming to your mind right now is that time when you were sitting in an exam and you looked at the clock and you thought you had an hour to go, but in fact you only had five minutes to go and you still had half the paper left to write. Or maybe a friend's birthday was coming up and you thought you had plenty of time to purchase a present. However, now it's the day of their birthday and you realize that you have no time to go to the shops or to buy a present or to buy a card. Or maybe you've been running late for a plane before and you've had that very embarrassing call over the loudspeaker where they call your name and ask if you're gonna board the plane. And then once you actually board the plane, you have to walk past all the people who have already boarded the plane and who have just been waiting for you to take off. Or maybe there's been a time where you've had an appointment to get to. You've lost track of time, you end up leaving the house late and you're rushing to get to the appointment. And of course you get stuck at every red light along the way and get stuck behind multiple trucks and you end up being late for the appointment. I might be speaking from personal experience about that last one because I continually run late and think that I have more time than what I actually do. This can sometimes leave me rushing, unprepared, missing the thing that I'm actually supposed to be doing. This series is called Kingdom Without a King, and we've been exploring whether we can be a part of the kingdom of God and not actually having Jesus as king of our lives. I want to share and unpack with you today one of Jesus' parables where he talks about the kingdom of God, or as the book of Matthew calls it, the kingdom of heaven. This parable that we're going to read today is it's quite a confronting parable. Jesus shares the urgency of staying ready and prepared for the kingdom of God. There are three characters in this parable. The bridegroom, that represents Jesus. There are five sensible bridesmaids, as the parable calls them, and they represent the believers. And there's five foolish bridesmaids, which would represent unbelievers. Now, to give you some context before we go through this parable, in ancient Jewish times, when two people were matched to be married, the bridegroom would go back to his house and build an upper room or an annex or a separate house if he was really rich for his bride. Now, this might take some time and before the bridegroom could go and collect the bride, the father of the bridegroom would have to inspect the place where the bridegroom was going to bring his bride. Now, back in ancient times, they obviously didn't have mobile phones or email or telephone or carrier pigeons or anything like that to get the message that they were now on their way to collect the bride. The only way the bride would have known that the bridegroom was coming was through travelers through the village or passerbys or whispers about where the bridegroom was up to in building this place where they were gonna live. Jesus is using this real life example for them to explain how to be prepared or how to be ready for the kingdom of God. This is the parable that he told. He said, then the kingdom of heaven is like 10 bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them foolish, five of them wise. The five who were foolish, they didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the five who were wise took extra olive oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and they fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by a shout, look, the bridegroom is coming, come out to meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. But the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough oil for all of us. Go to the shop and buy some yourselves. 
But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, the five other bridesmaids returned, and they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you don't know the day or the hour of my return. This parable should make us ask the question, how can we stay prepared and ready to receive the kingdom of God? It should also make us ask the question, what does it mean to live a life that's fully devoted to Jesus and places him as king? You see, out of these 10 bridesmaids, they were all waiting for the bridegroom. However, only five of them were ready for his return. Five of them, the foolish ones, were in the kingdom. However, they didn't know Jesus as king. So what can this parable actually teach us about the kingdom of God and placing Jesus as king? Well, we need to prioritize people. Even though this parable is a little bit sobering and a little bit confronting in the fact that we should be prepared for when the kingdom of God returns, it should also prompt us and remind us that Jesus loves people. People matter to Jesus. Jesus wants everyone to be in a relationship with him. So are we doing everything we can to show the kingdom of God to everyone around us? Are we doing everything we can to show people the love of Jesus? Are we doing everything we can to serve people like Jesus would have served them? You know, sometimes I think we can be a bit like the five sensible bridesmaids, even though they had oil and they were prepared and ready for the bridegroom's return, they still fell asleep. I wonder what would have happened if they would have helped or spoken to or reminded the other five bridesmaids to get extra oil or to help them at least find extra oil. Would those five foolish bridesmaids be able to enter the wedding with the bridegroom as well? Jesus' last command was, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Friends, have we fallen asleep in our faith? We're prepared. We have the oil for our lamps, so to speak. We know Jesus and have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. But have we stopped inviting people to church? Have we stopped telling people about the good things that God is doing in our lives? Have we stopped telling people how much God loves them? I think this is a challenge for all of us, myself included. A reminder to not fall asleep in my faith. A reminder that even though I might be prepared, I can be helping prepare other people as well. People matter to Jesus, so they should matter to me too. The second thing this parable can teach us is to prioritize Jesus. We can learn that we need to seek first his kingdom. Jesus, just a few chapters earlier in his Sermon on the Mount, reminds the people listening not to worry about worldly things like clothes or what they'll eat, because when they put the kingdom of God first, God will take care of them. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. The sobering thing about this parable is the five foolish bridesmaids thought they had more time. They fell asleep, they ran out of oil, and it ended up costing them. They ended up outside, in the dark, away and separate from the bridegroom. They weren't prepared to put the kingdom of God first. You see, when we put the kingdom of God first, even though this is countercultural in our 21st century way today, we see God's provision in ways that we could have never have imagined. We have enough oil for our lamps, so to speak. When we seek the kingdom of God, when we prioritize Jesus, God promises us that we will have life in abundance. We will have peace that surpasses all understanding. We will have joy, hope, and love. The world will give the opposite. The world will give us worry, anxiety, hopelessness, and sadness. The world will separate us from where we should be, from where we need to be with the bridegroom, Jesus. John 10.10 10 says, The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose, or Jesus' purpose, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. 
The more we spend time with Jesus, the more we learn about him. The deeper our relationship grows, the more willing we are to tell others about what he has done in our lives. Seeking his kingdom first, prioritizing Jesus, is just moving a step closer each day towards the Lord. So friends, how can we do this? How can we prioritize people and how can we prioritize Jesus? We know that people matter to Jesus. Who can you show his love to this week? How can you live beyond yourself this week? Maybe you feel like you've fallen asleep in your faith and you need to wake up to yourself. How can you do that? Maybe it's setting a time each morning to read the word or to listen to what God is telling you about each day. Maybe it's listening to worship music on your way to work or praying with your family every night around the dinner table. I know for me, when I feel like I have fallen asleep in my faith, these are a few things that work for me. Meeting up with a friend, setting time in the morning to do my devotions and journal, listening to worship music or a Christian podcast, praying with my husband before we go to work. These things awake my soul. They awaken my faith and remind me that Jesus is King. Maybe you're a part of the kingdom, but Jesus is not King of your life. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to accept him as your Lord and Savior, to get more oil in your lamp and to step into that abundant life that he has for you. Friends, let me pray for you today. Lord Jesus, we ask Holy Spirit, you come into this moment. We ask for people who have fallen asleep in their faith. We ask that you wake us up this week, that you give us those moments that awaken our soul. We ask for those of us who feel challenged to go out and to prioritize people or to prioritize you again as King. We ask Holy Spirit, you help us to do that. And Lord Jesus, we ask for those people who are sitting there today and saying, I want Jesus as King in my life. Holy Spirit, we ask that you meet them where they are today and become king of their lives. We thank you for them. We pray for these things in your name. Amen. What a powerful message. Hey, nothing beats being in the room together, doing community and worshiping God. So I would love to invite you to one of our services on a Sunday at either Ripley or Springfield. We would love to see you there. We're excited to let you know about some changes coming up for our online service. Over the next few weeks, we'll be moving this video's release time to a Sunday evening. And you can still get our sermon podcast on a Sunday morning at 9 a.m. But in the meantime, don't forget to check out last week's message and some amazing worship songs from our team over here. And we will see you next week.